representing a return to its corporate roots as the Volvo V90 estate. While the XC90 SUV may have stolen the limelight in recent years, at heart the Swedish marks an estate car specialist, with decades of wagon building prestige to its name. However, the last couple of V70 offerings haven't been the most inspiring, so this new model, resurrecting the V90 badge, has a hard task ahead if it wants to make a good impression. To add to that challenge, it's pitched as a premium alternative to the German trio of Audi A6 Avon, BMW 5 Series Touring and Mercedes-Benz E-Class Estate. Not everyone wants an estate, of course, and for those buyers is the closely related Volvo S90 Saloon. Based on same platform as the XC90 the V90 has been given a solid foundation, it's based on the same scalable product architecture, SPA, underpinnings as the larger XC90, and will feature 2.0-litre, four-cylinder engines also used by the SUV. Immediately recognizable are the T-shaped LED headlights and large swathes of the cockpit. There's a lot borrowed from the XC90, which is a good thing, as it's a great car. The way it drives is similar to Volvo calls this relaxed confidence and it's a refreshing change from the sporty pretensions of its German rivals. It's no driver's car but there's plenty of confidence inspiring traction allied with a quiet, comfortable ride, providing you opt for the adaptive suspension package. Familiar engines powering the V90 R2 diesels, called D4 and D5 power pulse. Although other markets also get a T6 petrol this is unlikely to come to Britain, but we should see the petrol-electric plug-in hybrid T8 in due course. All engines are four-cylinder, 2.0-litre turbocharged units and boast impressive economy figures. The D5 features an innovative power pulse system that helps spool up the turbocharger at low revs for faster throttle response, and it makes the V90 feel more spontaneously powerful than you'd expect from a big diesel estate. It's the D4 that's the cheapest to run with official claims of 62.8 miles per gallon and CO2 emissions of 119 grams slash km. Ditech safety kit safety and space are the main selling points of this car but it impresses more on the former count. You get a 560 litre boot that expands to 1526 litres with the seats down, and loads of head and legroom for all inside. It's decent, but rivals are considerably bigger and Volvo files with doubtless lament the absence of a vertical tailgate to boost capacity. As well as a large census touch screen in the centre console, which replaces a huge number of functions and buttons from around the cabin, you also get a set of digital dials and a raft of driver assistance equipment. Standard features include pilot assist, which takes care of the throttle, steering and brakes from traffic jams all the way up to cruising speed, plus a sophisticated crash avoidance system that can spot pedestrians, cyclists and large animals in front of the car, day or night. Volvo V90 Estate Model History March 2016 new estate car range to replace the Volvo V70 available to order for delivery in the second half of 2016. Two powertrains are available, each with a 2.0-litre diesel engine, D4 is front-wheel drive, while D5 power pulse has all-wheel drive as standard. There's a pair of well-appointed trim levels, too, in the forms of the entry-level momentum and the luxurious inscription. June 2016 Sporty R design specification now available to order with both the D4 and D5 Power Pulse AWD powertrains. Key visual differences include a gloss black grille, a deeper front spoiler, and matte dark grey alloy wheels. September 2016, aftermarket Polestar performance optimization package optionally available, uprating the D5 Power Pulse to 240 horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque. November 2016. Safety enhancements with the introduction of slippery road alert and hazard light alert. Information is shared with a data cloud that similarly equipped cars download and present to the driver. December 2016, multimedia system now compatible with Android Auto and Skype for business. Read the full Volvo V90 estate review to see why we rate the latest Swedish wagon so highly. Efficient pair of turbocharged diesels no performance versions on the horizon plug-in hybrid T8 version to follow powered by a pair of diesel engines, Volvo V90 performance is ample rather than outstanding. No petrol versions are offered in the UK, but the mark is expected to introduce its T8 petrol electric plug-in hybrid to the range at a later date. Efficient diesel engines regardless of which V90 you pick, the power plant is a 4-cylinder, 2.0-litre, turbocharged unit. First up is the more frugal of the two, the front-wheel drive D4, 
producing 190 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque from a satisfactorily low 1,750 revolutions per minute. So far, it's proving the most popular choice. Top speed is quoted at 140 miles per hour, while the 0 to 62 miles per hour dash takes 8.5 seconds. So it's no slouch, but there's an alternative if you want to go quicker. That's the role of the D5 Power Pulse AWD, all wheel drive, courtesy of its 235 horsepower and 480 newton meters outputs. Top speeds increased to 145 miles per hour, while the sprint from 0 to 62 miles per hour is a hot hatch like 7.2 seconds. The D5's important addition is that power pulse function. Helping cut down on the slight delay sometimes felt on turbocharged engines. It compresses air into a storage cylinder that is then used to spin the turbo into action when there are insufficient exhaust gases to do so, making the V9A much more responsive. It's a lighter, cheaper system than the electronic compressor used in the Audi SQ7. Standard automatic gearbox there's only one choice of transmission, an 8-speed automatic box that merges together its ratios in a smooth and, for the most part, timely fashion, providing your driving in an equally tranquil manner. When pushing on we found the gearbox wasn't quite as proactive as it could be, made worse by the absence of steering wheel paddles for those moments when you want to take over. Comfort is the watchword with this larger state but it's more successful with adaptive suspension or wheel drive is standard on top line D5 models Volvo's description of the V90's handling is relaxed confidence and this seems quite fitting. Slower steering with little feedback through the wheel means you can't hustle it like its sportier BMW 5 Series touring rival but good body control allows you to make quick progress on a flowing road. Based on the XC90's architecture, the Volvo V90 is very similar in the way it drives, although the estate car's lower center of gravity lends it a less roly-poly character. On adaptive air suspension it dealt with lumps and bumps with sublime control practically floating over rough roads when the drive mode was left in its native comfort setting. You can tighten things up with dynamic mode but there's no getting around the V90's size and weight. This is no agile hatchback, the D5's all-wheel drive system finds masses of traction but gives way to the nose washing wide if you dial in a little too much speed. The standard suspension arrangement isn't as sophisticated and consequently neither is the ride quality. It's not uncomfortable, but you're significantly more aware of rougher road services. So upgrade to the adaptive arrangement if your budget will stretch to it. Key to getting the best out of your V90, according to Volvo's chassis engineers, is to stick with 19-inch wheels. These give the best balance of appearance, handling and ride comfort. Well-made cabin employs high-quality materials. Central touch screen replaces much of the switchgear. Very similar layout to the XC90 SUV's interior. Climb aboard the Volvo V90 and you'll appreciate that the cabin is full of lovely materials. From soft leather to cross-cut wood inserts with the grain lined up diagonally. It's strikingly bare as well. Most of the controls and buttons have been migrated to the central screen so the cabin looks simple but elegant and really attractive. If you've been in an XC90 you might get a sense of deja vu, so similar are their cabins. It's very easy to get comfortable thanks to a squashy yet supportive driver's seat that offers plenty of adjustment. The digital dashboard is bright and clear and just as uncluttered as the rest of the cockpit. Comfort is amplified by the optional air suspension Volvo's seats continue to be the industry benchmark lots of space for passengers, especially in the rear given our findings in the handling section you'd imagine that comfort would be an area where the Volvo V90 excels, and you would be right, with one caveat. The adaptive air suspension setup is very comfortable indeed, gliding over tarmac imperfections with little hassle and isolating larger bumps to a corner of the car rather than it reverberating around the cabin. Stick with the standard steel springs and while it's not uncomfortable, you're aware of ruts in the road being telegraphed to your post area. Noise-wise there's very little intrusion from the D4 and D5 engines, which go about their business with incredible discretion. The seats are nothing short of being supremely comfortable, as you'd expect from Volvo, and unsurprisingly considering the length of the V90, you get acres of space when sitting in the back high level of standard equipment inscription likely to be the popular choice wide range of option packs available nice and simple here, with three V90 trim levels to choose from in a similar vein to the larger XC90's lineup. Of the momentum, inscription and R-design guises, Volvo expects the middle ranking one to be the most popular. 
Standard Volvo V90 Estate Equipment Entry Level Momentum Cars come with a good specification including a full European sat-nav with traffic information and mapping updates on a 9.0 inch screen. You also get the very cool Pilot Assist, a semi-autonomous system that controls of the steering, accelerator and brakes for you at speeds below 80 miles per hour you have to keep your hands on the wheel, but it certainly takes the effort out of motorway cruising and queuing. Data Kit includes Sensors Connect which provides a connection to the internet and a range of apps. It also enables the car to book itself into a garage when it needs a service. Other highlights include LED headlights with active high beam, DAB radio and Bluetooth connectivity, two-zone climate control, powered tailgate and folding rear seat mechanism, 17-inch alloy wheels, 18-inch with the D5 engine, digital instrumentation, leather upholstery and heated front seats. Boost the levels of luxury with inscription trim, which adds an Apple leather upholstery, powered front seats, with driver's side memory, a larger 12.3-inch screen for the dashboard, keyless entry and start, hands-free tailgate operation, 18-inch alloys and walnut interior inlays. Those seeking a sportier look should consider the R design. It features lowered suspension, a subtle body kit hallmarked by a black mesh grille and 18-inch matte black alloys, while inside it differs from the inscription thanks to its sports seats. New buck leather upholstery and dark interior trims. Optional Volvo V90 estate accessories, as well as a number of individual options for tailoring your Volvo V90, such as a range of wheels from 17 to 21 inches. There are four main packs containing desirable upgrades. A winter pack comes with heated windscreen, steering wheel, and washer nozzles, plus a headlight cleaning system. Winter Plus features the aforementioned gadgets, plus active dynamic headlights and LED front fog lights with cornering function. The family pack gets you integrated two-stage booster cushions on the outer rear seats, plus powered child locks and sun curtains for the rear doors. Finally, the futuristic sounding Xeon Impact comes with a powered tilt and slide panoramic sunroof, 360 degree view parking camera and an automatic parking system. One of the safest cars tested by your own cap years of safety research encompassed in the V90 additional safety tech optionally available Volvo V90 safety was commended for one of the highest scores yet attained in its Euro and cap crash test. Hardly a surprise given that the Swedish mark has long been at the forefront of this field. Standard safety equipment includes a voice control system, runoff road protection, which automatically tightens the front seat belts if the car leaves the road, and the city safety suite. This gets you pedestrian, cyclist and large animal detection and front collision warning with autonomous emergency braking. You also get the semi-autonomous pilot assist, which takes care of the steering, throttle and brakes from traffic jams to motorway cruising speed. Volvo is keen to point out this is not a completely autonomous driving system, you still have to keep a hand on the wheel. It works well at low speeds, taking the monotony out of creeping around in traffic, but it needs increased steering input at speed. We also found it had a tendency to make the car sit much further left in the lane than we felt comfortable with. Ample space for passengers, with generous rear legroom boot space lags behind rivals, slinkier rear impinges on capacity simple flap in the boot floor is an effective load space divider once upon a time, Swedish estates had about as much space as a spare bedroom, so it's disappointing to discover that the practicality of the Volvo V90 has been compromised by its styling. The culprit is the slopping roofline and angled tailgate, no perpendicular rear end here. It looks sleeker but with only 560 litres of boot space, it lags behind the Audi A6 Avon, BMW 5 Series Touring and Mercedes-Benz E-Class Estate. Drop the rear seats and this expands to 1,526 litres. It's not small, by any means, but far from class leading. Still. It does have the simple yet clever pop-up section of boot floor to use as a divider preventing things sliding around too much.